Hello and welcome to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials number two. Today we're going to be going over variables and the simple addition calculator. Um, so as you've noticed, uh, we already got our header finished. I went ahead and put uh, exactly what number of pr programming tutorial we are on and what we are going to be covering in this tutorial. From this programming lesson forward, we are going to be using that exact format for my header. You can certainly use whatever header you would like. Um, just as a, a note that I think I forgot in the last programming tutorial, these will uh, these ten episodes will be released in a two-week interval. So the next time you will be seeing one of these programming tutorials up will be in exactly two weeks, 14 days. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with our public class, and we're going to call this simple calc. Put our two braces and then we're going to go ahead and uh, put in our main method so public public static void main and then string two brackets and then args close our parentheses put our braces all right and now here's what we're going to do uh, there are many different types of uh, variables that you can declare in a program but the two main ones that we're going to be focusing on inside the simple calculator today are going to be integers and doubles we may go into uh, to floats but uh, there's only a few minute differences between floats and doubles so uh, let's go ahead and start with integers we're going to declare two or three integers rather so int a equals zero int b equals zero and int c you can certainly do whatever spacing formats you want but i like to put spaces between the uh, the variables and the equal signs and the uh, the actual sums so basically w the end result that we want from this program is going to be c equals a plus b or any combination of those so it could be a equals b plus c or whatever you want just be sure to keep that straight in your head for now i'm going to do c equals a plus b and as for this you always want what's going to be summed before you want what's going to be summed to solve for that so it's always going to be c equals or a equals not a plus b equals c once we've done that, let's go ahead and get um, all of the meat inside the actual program going. So in order to actually pick up the variables that we're going to be putting down, I want to show you guys how to import different, um, different libraries from the actual Java language. So we're going to type import, and this is going to be above the class declaration. We're going to do java.util.scanner with a capital S. What this is going to do is this is going to give you the functionality of scanners inside your program. So under our int declaration now, we're going to do capital S, scanner, and just do input for now, equals new scanner system in. Basically what this does is this declares a new scanner. We're going to call it input, and it's going to have the functionality of system.in. So now that we have that finished, we can go down here and do system.out.println. We're going to do please enter the value you would like for a period quotes parentheses semicolon. And then we're going to do a equals input, and that's the name of our scanner, dot next int. And what that's going to do is that's going to call in the scanner. The scanner is going to scan for the input that the, the user inputs, and it's going to assign it to A. So we can pretty much do the exact same thing for B. And just copy all of this, save yourself some time, and please enter the value you would like for B. And then we're just going to change this to B. B equals input dot next int. Okay, so now we have that. That'll assign both the values that we want for A and B. And then it's going to add them, sum them up, and then assign them to C. So now all that's left is um, displaying the actual variable to the user. So for that, we're just going to do another output statement. System.out.println. And we're going to say the sum of your two numbers 
is put a space on there, close the quotes, and then assign it to C, close that. And that would essentially be the entire program right there. Now, the key thing to remember with ints is that they are all real numbers, so there are no decimals with ints. There are no fractions with ints either. So it is simply things like 1, 2, and 3. It can't be 1.1, 2.2, and 3.3. So if we go ahead and run this, we're going to compile it, and I'm going to save over simple calc. We're going to go ahead and run it. It's going to ask you what value you would like for A. So I'm going to put 12. And B, well, let's put 21, come out to 33. That's correct. So our program is functioning properly. Now, I just want to run this one more time. If we were to do 12. Point 2 or 12.3. You can see it would give you an error because um, input mismatch exception. The reason why is because we put in a double or a float depending on which one you'd want it to be and we, uh, we have the receiving end as an integer so those two don't work. Now we could easily change that by just putting in double for all three of these. And then the next time we compiled that and then run it, we could do 12.3. Pardon me. Ah, silly me. I forgot we need to do next double. Okay, so once we put in next double, we can go ahead and punch in 12.3. My goodness and 13.2 for instance and it comes out to 25.5 notice how I changed both of these from next int to next double and that solved the problem now if we wanted to do floats the difference between floats and doubles well there really isn't much difference uh, I don't want the S I just want it to be float okay The difference between floats and doubles is, like I said, not too much. Ah, okay. So, and then here we would just do next float. And the program would essentially work the same, unless you were working on a grander scale. Floats are more uh, finite than doubles. And they accept more specific values. Um, so, to more decimal places, essentially. Now, the one thing you do want to know is um, there are a couple other things that I do want to cover real quick. There is the character, C-H-A-R, and that will accept one letter. So, character A equals A. Um, Boolean functions, I forgot my colon here. Boolean functions, so we'd want bool is true equals false. Now, Boolean functions, their only two outputs are either false or true. And they're both lowercase. And basically, it's an on-off switch. So, just keep, in, keep that in mind. False is off, true is on. Uh, it comes in handy a lot later when we kind of start covering loops. And then, the last thing that I can think of would be strings. And we'll go into more depth about strings later, because... Um, Strings are not only a variable, but they are also a an entire library to themselves that's automatically imported every time. So string A equals this is a string. And just think of strings as a string of characters. So you're able to make full sentences. Um, you can carry names inside strings. You can do a whole bunch of fun stuff with strings, which we'll be covering more in the next tutorial. But as for now, that is all for this tutorial, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.